Hi, this is Miss Mellorine. Today we're going to talk about some classical polar curves. Um, I have mine recorded on our worksheet and we are just going to work through this and talk about the different curves. All right, the first curve that we see is called a rose. Um, the equations for this rose are r equals a times the sine of n theta and r equals a times the cosine of n theta. Now, um, if you investigate this curve and change the numbers a and n, um, and n needs to be positive, by the way, um, but if you change them, you will see differences in symmetry, you will see the, the lengths of the petals change, and you will see the number of petals change. So there you go. You should investigate um, the rows if you want to make a nice cute little flower and investigate it and see what the A and N do to the actual curve. The next curve that we see here is called a lemniscuit. And let me spell that for you. L-E-M-E-I-S-C-A. A lemniscuit. Okay. I know it sounds kind of strange, maybe like limp biscuit, but it's lemniscuit. Oh, well, anyway, so this one is a little complicated to put into your calculator. Um, this curve actually looks like R square equals A square times cosine two theta, which is actually probably this one since it goes around the um, X axis you know, that nice infinity shape. And then um, you also could type in R square equals A square times sine two theta. Now you might ask, how do I type this into my calculator to get this kind of curve? Um, and I have better luck with the sine than the cosine. The cosine is going to leave a couple of little gaps. So what I did here, let me show you my screen. I went to y equals r equals and I typed in the square root because you can't type in r square so I had to do the square root and remember when you do square root of both sides you have to put a plus and a minus so what I did here was I typed in um, the positive square root of 9 cosine 2 theta and then negative square root of 9 cosine 2 theta and then if I press zoom 7 or I graph this is what it comes up with it doesn't connect all the way and that is because of some of the non-real answers and the limitations on the domain of this function now um, if I were to change the cosine to sine and then press graph I feel like this graph comes out better and we have the whole um, lemniscuit that will be graphed. So sine does graph better than the cosine, but you could kind of see and play around with that and change some of the numbers. So when you put this into your calculator, you are going to want to put um, R equals plus and minus. So it's going to be R1 and R2, the square root of A square cosine 2 theta or sine 2 theta. So this is how you're going to have to put this into your calculator if you want to play around with what these infinity symbols look like. Really cool. All right. So the next curve that we see with this little loop is called a lemison. L-I-M-A. And then this is a cedilla. O-N. Lemison. Lemison is the pronunciation of that one. All right. So here you're going to have R equals, sorry about that equal sign. Look at that. Um, a plus B cosine theta or R equals A plus B sine theta. Okay, so play around with the A and B, make A bigger than B, make A less than B, put a subtraction sign um, and see what happens when you use the sine and when you use the cosine. Just kind of play around with that and investigate the lemison. Alrighty, the next curve doesn't have a loop. Um, it could look like a peach. Some of my students say it looks like a butt. I'm so sorry that they think that, but you know, I don't know where they would get that. But it's called a cardioid. 
cardioid. And the cardioid is has a similar equation to the lemison, and um, it's R equals A plus A cosine theta. So it actually results from A and B in the lemison um, equation being equal, if A and B are equal, not one greater than the other. And then R equals A plus A sine theta. Again, you could play around with what if you put a subtraction or what if you change it from sine to cosine, but the cardioid, the cardioid is actually um, the A and A are equal or A and B are equal. Now the next one, I love this one, and I really enjoyed playing around with this one. This one is called the Spiral of Archimedes. Did I spell it wrong? I did. <laughs> it's got an I. This is an I. And Archimedes, was a um, mathematician philosopher person way back when and you can look up his story it's amazing you can kind of see from the graph um it, it he invented the screw and he invented lots and lots of cool things way way back um he was a great great inventor and great mathematician and i wish i had the time to tell you the story um, but he is amazing and you should go look him up and look up all the different things that he did um, he made the world a better place with his inventions and his ingenuity um, wonderful person all right so the the equation for archimedes the spiral of archimedes is r equals a theta Okay, now this one, um, it, when I first put this in my calculator and I did R equals, let me clear out my Y equals, and if I put R equals 2 theta and I press graph, it didn't give me a whole spiral. It kind of looked like it wanted to, like it started off, but then it stopped. And so then it's like, okay, well, what would happen if I changed that 2 to uh, 0.5, say, 1 half theta, and I press enter then it kind of did a little bit different but it also looks like it gave me more of a spiral so i think the the smaller the a number the tighter your spiral is going to be now if you want it to go around more than one time and you take a look at your window if you look at the theta values the theta max is approximately two pi so you're only going around your circle once and for this screw, it probably goes around infinitely, or it can go around many, many, many times. So um, if you change that, and I'm just going to type in 10 pi, I'm going to type in 10 pi and press enter. And now it gives me this big old decimal, 31.4. Um, and then I press graph. You're going to see a whole different story. So you can play around with the number. We can make the, the 0 0.5, maybe a 0 0.2, and then press graph, and we'll see what happens. And it makes a really nice, tight spiral, and it goes around 10 pi. Um, so you can play around with your window, um, play around with the numbers. The bigger the number, the bigger the spiral. The smaller the number, the tighter the spiral. So if you want to see more of a spiral, then you will have to um, make that A number smaller. And you can play around with the window and see more of that. Alrighty, so here are the classic polar curves that we're going over today. I hope you enjoy this. Isn't this amazing? Isn't it wonderful? Um, the world of mathematics is just magical. And I just love it. And I hope you love it too. So we'll see you next time. Yay, math! Woohoo!